What's up everybody, welcome to Cat and Beats and welcome to the second installment where we're going to be continuing to mix this nice summer vibey 1990s house track from Satinka. Make sure to check out Satinka, his uh, link is in the description below and give him some love for letting me, you know, rip this track apart and put it back together. We're going to be putting it back together with Waves and for my Patreons, um, or for my Patrons, this file will be available for you as soon as I am finished with it. And if you also want to support this channel and become a Patron, please go over to my Patreon page, which is in the description and go over there and you'll be able to download this file when I'm done with it. Um, but right now I'm really busy, so I'll be done with it a little bit later. So let's just uh, get started again. We're going to get stuck in. And for today's session, we just have to get the drums to sound thick and warm. Um, yeah, so let's have a good, good little session. Let's have a little listen because I haven't heard this file for a while again. Clap is really wide. Yeah, this is way too wide. Um, I probably, yeah, I did this last week because it was too narrow. Let's use uh, an S1 imager, which is a Waves plugin. Uh, what it normally is used for is to make things wider. Right now we're going to use it to make things narrower. So we have this width knob. Way too wide. What we can do is this. Let's also take this upbeat for a second. Where the hell is it? And let's kind of um, set the width together. So too wide. Pretty good. I really like the tail of this track, so that's nice. Uh, let's just have a listen to this again. Let's just quiet it down a tad. And let's put up that ticka ticka ticka, that shaker, which is somewhere here. It's weird, this one is like a little bit too much on my left, but let's just uh, put that a little bit on the right again. Something's wrong with this shaker, it sounds a bit off. I might actually just end up uh, using a different shaker. Anyway, let's now work on getting the sound a little bit more together uh, sounding. My favorite way of doing these things is to uh, think of everything that is wrong with it and or wrong and do something called sh shared harmonics. So I am a fan of using sends and uh, sends, they're down here. Uh, what they'll do is they will, uh, if you put in more than one track, you're gonna get something called shared harmonics um, and then you get this together type of sound. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Uh, the first thing that I want is is that the sound itself is currently a little bit dull, so I kind of want to liven it up. Now, the Aphex Vintage Exciter is terrible on its own, but on Ascend, it's really, really nice. This is a 1980s uh, Exciter, and an Exciter is basically harmonic distortion, and this one does it really well on the top end. Mostly on vocals, this really you know makes things sing. Uh, so what we can do is um, just think, have a listen, and feel which tracks sound a little bit dull. The, the clap sounds a little bit dull, still too wide. Just wanna put that down a bit more. Okay, let's get this Aphex Vintage Exciter on here. What we're gonna do is just slowly pump in, bump into it uh, and see how it will make the clap just all of a sudden appear brighter. So too much.
Nice, let's adjust the gain. Have an A B. And there it is. So it's just a cool guy. That's nice. Let's do the same to this 16th group, which has basically all of the um of the hi-hats, right? Ooh. Okay, cool. Um, let's just for a second get rid of the getting contact group. Ugh, so many groups. Groups and groups and groups. Groupception. Alright, so we'll do this one. We're slowly gonna put this one in as well. Actually, the, only the upbeat because the shaker is already very top end heavy. That's about right. Okay, now let's put in that getting contact group just to have a little look how this is going to sit together with the other one. Let's also think in mono and in stereo. So the upbeat, uh, as in mono and sides, the upbeat sounds a bit... Sounds more stereo than it. Yeah, that's okay. So normally if I get two parts playing at the same time... Um, Instead of just thinking, you know, I'm going to put one hi-hat left and one hi-hat right, which is nice, but it can get annoying to headphone users. I try to think in, uh, you know, main percussion elements, they go in the middle. But if I can, you know, if there is extra little loops and, and crap, sometimes it's nice to just spread it out a bit. So we're going to take the uh, S1 imager again. We're just gonna again have a have a little look, a little play, see what we can do with this thing. Let's just spread it out. Yeah, let's have a little look here. Let's see. I'm gonna also just get a little bit of a little bit of that, and let's have a little play with this one. Yeah, so now it's out of the way. Yeah, listen. They're in each other's way. Let's get it a little bit more. I know you get like this inside out feeling in your ears, but don't worry, in the mix it'll make sense. deal with this the uh, shaker is still annoying the crap out of me but that's okay so now we have a little bit of top and let's have a little a b as long as you can smile so this is my test when it goes like this and then when i click b it's like ha 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 so ho ha ho ha <laughs> uh. Okay, so the next thing that I'm thinking now is, what kind of space are we in? Um, as in, I want a drum room. And it's really nice to have drum rooms, uh, because you can create this little, this little environment that the listener is in. It sounds a bit weird, but uh, let's go from O to A with the space that we're in. So he already set up a drum room here, so let's have a little listen to what it's doing. It's doing nothing that must mean that I deleted things. I'm gonna delete that anyway, because we're not allowed to use any third-party plugins except for Waves. I suggest you do these challenges as well, because um, they're really fun. Um, because that way you learn to get out of your comfort zone and just learn different techniques. So I'm gonna go for H Reverb. I used this years ago when it was a big thing. And I completely forgot how to use it. So my default will be to go through presets. Yes, presets. All right. Let's um, let's put in... Um, God. Let's put in the clap because with the clap, it's going to be easy to time the reverb. The way I time reverb is by listening. So if the, the clap goes... To, to buka, to buka, the ah to the next kick, that's the amount of reverb I'll give to it, generally speaking. 
So um, let's just bump it in fully. Are you crazy? Yes, I am. And then, okay, that's too long. It does sound cool though. But now let's have a little think. What kind of sound do we want out of this? It's a bit too bright. So now I kind of want a reverb drum that is a bit like that. So I already like this. I, I like it. So let's just set this good. Whoa, what is this doing? Whoa. What? I didn't know this had, um, this had that. What is that? Okay, so that's that. What's this? Whoa! Holy shit. But how does this delay shit work? Where's the button for delay? Alright. So is it echoes? Oh. No clue. Expand. Oh, whoa! <laughs> okay, so, uh, this is a first for me. What is all this stuff? Holy crap. I just would like to, like, get these to not go da 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 Cool. Oh, that is cool. Listen to that. That is really cool. Dude. All right, so what? Oh, this is awesome. Okay, so let's put that darkness into this um into this mixing because it's a bit too bright like this it's a bit like hey how you doing i kind of want a little bit more like sexiness oh yeah great oh yeah that's nice um Let's uh, let's have a little listen to the to this Hyatt group because it is bothering me. Should we just drop in the whole one just to see what happens? Nah, let's drop in only the upbeat. Uh, there's already a reverb behind us. Yeah. I agree. I should take this out. And then drop it into that. Okay, let's always make sure that we continuously check the um, before and after. Oh, I pressed something here. Oh yeah, oops. Let's give this a little different button here. Let's make this number two. All right. Yeah, nice. All right. Uh, so we can go on and like do effects reverbs, uh, and effects sends, and make all these like intricate little detailed things, but I don't want to do that just yet. That's going to come a little bit later. Um, right now, I just need to get the drum sound to be perfect. Um, so let's go into the compression field of things. A couple of compressors that I know um, that I like. I'll, I'll just tell you about them as we go here. Uh, so we got a DBX, we got 1176. Oh, it's not a 76, it's called a CLA 76, I guess. All right, yeah, this is it. Uh, what else do we have? Um, 1176 CLA 3 uh, API. We have the Fairchild as well, the 670. It's gonna be too slow. All right. So these are different types of compressors. 
and um, the API is going to probably be the one that's going to make the most sense. Now, the reason why this this is the most okay, you know, let's start with the most difficult, the most easy one first, and then we'll just go through and we'll do a shootout. Why not? So let's go with a DBX uh, 160, and um, this is a VCA compressor. It's famous for its knock. Um, so normally I would use this for a kick drum that needs to support an 808 and then you get the ap, ap type of sound. But right now we're going to use it like this. Now, uh, I like this thing because it has a mix knob. The mix knob is there for parallel compression. This thing compresses the living snot out of everything immediately. So that's why we're putting it on drums. <laughs> All right. Let's have a listen. So that's the sound that's coming into it. Let's just turn this off as well. So this is what we would mix into it, this sound. You know what? That attack time isn't that bad. Not that fast. Anyway, it's making the kick knock a lot. Let's try to also do a high pass, um, which is a, a high pass filter so that the low end of the kick is left alone. Let's have a listen. This basically is going to only say to us, do you want more or less knock of kick? So let's anyway, let's just try the, the mix knob uh, and see if it's gonna sound nice. So before, Just the gain. Sounds pretty sexy actually, not too bad. Okay, so let's uh, try the um, this one as well. Variable Mu. Uh, this is a big ass box of sexy tubes which needs to constantly be replaced and it's very annoying. You need to, <laughs> I used to have to go to a studio where they had this and get up extra early and then turn on this, this compressor because otherwise it wouldn't be ready for, uh, for the day. Um, this one only has a, well, one knob to go in, one threshold knob, and then a time knob. Uh, I think one was the fastest setting of attack, and six was the fastest setting of attack with a variable release. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's just go through the, let's just smack the sn snot out of this, have a little listen. See what it's doing, you know. So it's important to look at this needle to see how it's bouncing back. So this is again what we would mix into it. Let's just see how it would sound. Ah, no. No, no, no. Okay, sorry, I don't like it. Only because of the, 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 the turd that it's creating. Here, listen to the kick drum. So, fuck that. Um, not the time and place for it right now. Let's get the 1176. This one is going to be a little, not that many knobs either. Except for the attack and release work the wrong way around. So fast release, um, fast attack, slow release, uh, slow attack, slow. So it's, you know, that. Uh, let's do, uh, let's get the attack first. Let's input it as hard as possible. Put the output down and have a listen. Okay, let's fuck with the attack a bit. That attack is not doing that much. That's oh, okay. Ah, it's not doing as much as I would initially want it. Oh yeah, fast release. No. Meh. 
the hell? In my memory, it sounds different, so like now I'm like... Okay, let's just put the input down and mix it in. I don't like it, so fuck that. Uh, the API is going to be my go-to because I know it's going to work. Uh, this one has more buttons. So button-wise, what we're going to do is put a ratio of about uh, 4. And then uh, attack time. I kind of want that knocky kick that the DBX did because it sounded cool. Release, we're going to adjust according to how it sounds. And then tone-wise, we're probably going to go medium, which means that there is an internal sidechain so that the low end is left alone. Oh, I was already like, why are you not moving? Let's compress it all the way. That could be cool, that toppy sound. All right, this could be cool. This could be good. Okay, let's check it out. So yeah, uh, I don't really give a shit what the VU meter is saying. I'm listening to the sound and then seeing if I like it or not. Uh, now, let's go an AB between these two and see which one is going to be uh, sounding the nicest. Let's also turn on the send. So the API is letting through a little bit more juice, so I'm going to keep that. And let's also turn down a little bit of this stuff, like minus five. And then my favorite trick is to um, put this drum, oh shit, the wrong button. To send these uh, reverb drums into a drum bus, like this. And then you get that like over the top compressed uh, sound. So we'll do drums. In capitals and click up the IO and then send this to the drums and then take the drum compressor and drop it up in there. And here we go, boop. And we're going to uh, click here on in, oh, in, you bitch. And this should be it. Oh, yeah, this needs to go to the drums as well. And now we have everything rooted into drums. Yep. I'm happy with those drums. They're knocking nice. Kind of missing the clap a little bit. Uh, so what I'll do as well on top of all this is I'm going to give a quick little compression to that clap. Because I kind of want it to go back, you know. It's a, it's a nice sound to have. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit and just do this with a normal compressor because it's just faster. Otherwise I have to like A, B shit again. I don't feel like that. Alright, so uh, there we go, there we go, there we go. And smack it down. One second. I kind of just want that like clap out of it. That's uh, only in my right ear. Ugh, that's annoying. Oh, that is so annoying. All right. I guess what we'll do is we'll come back to this next week where I will double up the clap, make a mono snare thing, and then um, we'll go from there. Uh, so for now, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the session. And next week, I'll see you where we're going to start introducing the bass, get the clap nice, get the synths in, and just kind of groove with it and um, see how the compressor holds up when we play everything back in. Peace out, much love, see you next Thursday.